bright sun coming soon to a sky near you. So here is a picture of that comet. And although we call it Comet Ison, it really should be called Comet Nevsky Novichanuk. Because Nevsky and Novichanuk are the two guys who found it. And this is a picture of them with their 16 inch telescope that they used to discover it. They uh, found it in September of 2012, um, and it's reported as C2012 S1, in parentheses, ISON. ISON standing for International Scientific Optical Network, which is the group of which these two astronomers were part of. Unfortunately, the media got a hold of it, saw ISON in parentheses, and said, oh, that's its name. It's Comet ISON. And it stuck. And even though it should be called Comet Nevsky Novichanuk, uh, we give up. Okay, it has been so ingrained. Even on Hubble site, you'll find we have an ISON blog. It's not the Nevsky Novichanuk blog. Okay, it's the ISON blog. Um, and sorry, guys, your names don't go down in history like that, unfortunately, because the media finds ISON much easier to use uh, in their stories. But the reason why this comet has caused so much uh, so much attention is because it's going to pass really close to the sun. All right. Um, this is Comet Neat as it passed close to the sun. You can see how close it got. Comet, comet Ison is going to pass this close. It's going to pass 2.7 solar radii away from the, the sun, center of the sun. All right, so you can see it's going to pass really close to the sun. It's going to be one of these sun grazing comets. And actually, we were wondering, is it a Kreutz family comet? Is it like one of these other sun-grazing comets? Well, its orbit is actually very similar to the great comet of 1680. And at one point, there was a hypothesis, maybe it is another comet in that, in that same orbit. Actually, it turns out that the, the orbits are, are, are distinct enough that we don't believe that the two comets are related. But since its, it's orbit is like 1680, and 1680 put on such a great show, well, we're really looking for something cool. So we've been following Comet Ison ever since its discovery. Um, here are Hubble's two images from the spring, uh, April 10th, uh, 2013, and May 8th of 2013. Uh, and Comet uh, and Hubble you know, was able to get reasonable images of it. But of course, Hubble can't monitor it. The international folk uh, group of astronomers, uh, especially amateur astronomers, have been tracking this like crazy. And we have amazing track records of it. So it was discovered here in uh, September of 2012. Uh, and over these points over here on the left-hand side were actually pre-discovery observations. They went back in the records and found uh, uh, observations that had it. Uh, and you can see it's been greatly tracked through it, throughout this. Now you can see this green line that I've drawn in here. That's the magical sixth magnitude, which is nominally how bright it needs to get for you to see it without a telescope. We call that naked eye brightness around sixth magnitude. All right. And if we zoom in onto this, onto the central region here, you can see what happened. That uh, Comet Ison was brightening according to one curve, um, and then it failed to follow that curve. And right here, um, there is a recalibration of the curve, and then it seems to be following this second red curve on up. And I have to say, the, have to say this is a fantastic plot from uh, a, a gentleman named Seiichi Yoshida, and it's updated as of last Saturday. So this is, fre this is fresh and current. And as we go into to, to perihelion, which occurs on Thanksgiving of this month, November 28th, you can see that we are getting up to eighth magnitude, very tantalizingly close to that magical sixth magnitude limit. It looks like there will be a period where it will be naked eye bright. And that period appears to be from around, I don't know, um, the 20th of November on through to about the 20th of December. Okay? Unfortunately, in November, we get the full moon on, I think it's November 15th. Um, uh, November 17th. November 17th is the full moon. Um, and the moon is going to start interfering with ISON observations starting around the 15th. So before Ison becomes naked eye bright in November, we're going to have to deal with the, full, with the moon. All right? And that may cause problems. Doesn't mean you won't be able to see it, but it just means that the, the moon will be actually brightening the sky. Uh, fortunately, we get new moon on December 2nd. And so throughout this period, there should be no, the moon will not be interfering with your observations. So there is a small window of about a month 
when uh, Comet Ison should be naked eye bright if it keeps on following this track, which it has followed very nicely for the past month or so. Unfortunately, the caveat to all this is that for comets, breaking up is not hard to do. Comets can go off in a variety of ways. Now, this is a cool thing. This is actually Comet Anki, okay? And I'm going to play this movie and watch it carefully because it's going to lose its tail. There's going to be a coronal mass ejection and a tail disconnection event. And there's the coronal mass ejection, and it just rips off the tail of Comet Anki. Did you see that? I'll play it again. But it's kind of cool to see the comet interacting with the solar wind. Again, here's the comet, there's the big coronal map, and rips the tail off of Comet Anki as it's passing through. So comets can lose their tails, all right? And I have a tail reconnection event. It can actually happen in even more startling fashion, as happened for this comet, Comet Lovejoy, uh, in 2011. I just threw this image in because it's just, it's just so cool to be able to get the, the telescope and the comet in, in the same pic. Uh, as it passed by the sun, it went really, really close. It went that close. 1.2 solar radii. Comet Lovejoy was not expected to survive its pass by the sun. Of course, we have those, uh, those satellites to watch it. And this is a fantastic combination of the LASCO C3, the LASCO C2, and the EIT 304 Angstrom instruments on SOHO. Three different instruments on SOHO combine to follow Comet Lovejoy as it passes in and passes even closer. And then it passes right by, this is it as it's near perihelion. Okay, so the, 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 the comet is not seen, it's near perihelion. Then it appears after perihelion. See that dot right there just to about the 3 o'clock uh, side of the, of, of the sun? That's Comet Lovejoy. Here on the left-hand side of, of the sun is its tail. Its tail got totally ripped off as it did that really close passage by the sun. However, as it got further away, its tail redeveloped. And you develop that full uh, dust tail. And by the time it passed out of C3, you can see not only the dust tail, but also the straight ion tail redevelop on Comet Lovejoy. Now, that's kind of cool in these eight pictures that I just showed you, but it's even cooler when I put it in motion in the movie. So here's Lovejoy passing in. Uh, it really takes a very quick pass by the sun, comes back out, and redevelops its tail. So comets can actually lose their tails, but that even more so than that, comets can totally break apart. This is Comet Schwachman Wachman 3, a really fun one to say. <laughs> Never fails to get a little bit of a giggle, Schwachman Wachman 3. Um, and this is an observation from the ground-based where you can see fragments B, G, and R, okay? Uh, this comet had already broken up, but Hubble was able to examine fragment B and see the extent of the breakup. And so this is Hubble's image of fragment B. And you can see the main comet and all the particles of it. And we got uh, three images over the course of several days seeing all of the small pieces of the comet that are breaking apart and going off of it. And the, quite, the worry is that Comet Ison is passing so close to the sun, if it is not a compact and well-held to together nucleus, it could break apart. And of course, it could also suffer a more egregious fate, although we don't expect it for this. There are some comets that disappear entirely. Here is more from SOHO. There are two comets down here that pass in and are never seen again. All right, here this is on a loop. They're going to pass in again. And it looks like the sun burps, right? Mmm, yum, love them comets, okay? Um, actually, that's not, uh, the, the coronal mass ejection is just fortuitous. It is not related to the comets passing into the sun. All right, these are the really close sun grazers that just pass in um, and we assume are evaporated. They can be very tiny comets. Um, as I was talking to somebody before the, before the lecture, uh, the SOHO satellite has discovered about 2,400 such comets. Right, they have been, by staring at the sun, they're able to see these sun grazers. They've discovered over 2,000 comets, uh, and I'm told that 83% of them are in the Kreutz family of sun grazers. 
So cool, we got uh, these, these satellites, those discovering comets, but some comets disappear forever on their passage by the sun.